Hi guys, it's Christine, and today I'm joining you with a wreath that I made from some household items as well as the Doodlebug Design Flea Market collection that just came out. Um, I started off with a foam wreath form that's 14 inches and some garbage bags. Um, these are just plain brown paper bags that you get at your grocery store. I cut the bottom off of them and then I cut one inch strips that were all the same length. Um, I set aside the ones that had writing on them so that I didn't have writing on my wreath. <laughs> um, and like three bags was plenty to get what I needed. After I cut those strips out, I crumpled them up and then I started applying them to my wreath. Now, as you can see, I'm gluing them centered onto the wreath with hot glue gun and then I'm just twisting the ends and they hold on their own. You don't have to tie it, you don't need anything extra. They hold really well and totally have a great look for fall. Um, I did about 30 strips, it wasn't a ton, uh, and I had my kids help me <laughs> sort through which ones had writing, which ones didn't. Okay, now you crumple them. Really easy job to include your kids on a four-year-old all the way on up to a 12 year old were helping me out get get the supplies ready to roll. So I'm gonna show you just the start of making the wreath and then I will show you, I'm gonna pause for a while and I'll show you what it looks like when I get to the end. This was not what I intended to do. I intended to just wrap the wreath with the garbage bag strips. But as I was playing, I decided I thought it kind of looked cool and I tried tying a knot and I tried twisting it and I realized that the twists would stay really well and it wasn't something I had seen done before on a wreath so I thought why not try and do a whole wreath that way and see if I can't make use of a household item that we normally just dispose of um, and make it pretty. So as you can see I got started there and now here I am finishing it off. It went really fast, like less than a half hour to do this. Uh, I only burned myself a couple times with the hot glue gun, so that's a success also. Um, we end up at the end, like, just you kind of have to overlap a little tiny bit, but you're overlapping really as you go so that you don't have any of the wreath form actually showing. It doesn't, it, it was not hard to move and shift things, especially if I worked quickly with that hot glue. Now I'm going to show you how I added a banner to the center of this wreath really wanted to play a lot with flea market collection, but I wanted to do something different um, from a traditional layout or cards. And I always love to make wreaths and this wreath turned out totally different from any that I've made before, but I really had fun playing with flea market and putting it together to make a banner. So as you can see, I used a couple of metal die cuts to make my banner base, and I used a pattern paper for the back and then a calmer monochromatic patterned piece in the middle. That orange, of course, works perfect for fall. And then I knew I wanted to add in the words fall and blessings, and those pieces come from the odds and ends kit. Uh, that you can get with Flea Market Collection. Those are ones that are not already sticky. So I am using a glue pen that's a ballpoint pen from Martha Stewart uh, to attach those. And then I'm going to work on my outside pieces. The outside pieces I wanted to use to make them like a decorative and add in some more odds and ends and stickers because I love them. And so I'm using some trees. And there were three trees in the odds and ends, and then the stickers that come with Flea Market Collection were a little bit smaller, and I didn't want to, I, I liked the size proportionate to the banner on these, so I wanted to stick with odds and ends. Uh, so I used one on each side, and then I'm also going to add a third one onto the left side, and I'm adding that with foam adhesive, which I only had tiny ones, so I spend forever picking it apart. <laughs> um, but I'm adding that over to the top of the left side. And then you'll see, of course, it's Doodlebug, so they have some adorable animals to include. And I liked this little owl, and I also have a son who thinks foxes are the greatest thing ever so I of course had to put a fox on there 
and I add in that little uh, grain piece over on the right side also to help bring a little more to the background of that one since it doesn't have the second tree. Um, I also am adding in some little acorns because they're just really cute. And then you can see I'm opening up my sprinkles pack. Ugh, I love those shape sprinkles. She does such a good job designing them and I can't get enough of them. So whenever I can incorporate them, I do. Uh, so here I'm just adding in a little bit of extra with those leaves. And I love that they add a little bit of dimension, but they're also shiny, so they add some interesting texture and just make for things to be a little more interesting and unique than with paper stickers. Now here, you're gonna see a little bit behind my creative process. I had thought I was going to add in some more of the circle sprinkles from that same sprinkles pack. And <laughs> I end up deciding I don't like that. <laughs> So I put them on and then you're going to see what is a very normal part of my process. I take them back off. <laughs> um, and, you know, I just stick them back in there and stick them back in the package and then I use them later. They usually don't use their, lose their stickiness quite that quickly. And I'm still kind of trying to figure out, do I want more with that fall blessing or not? I'm always, this is always part of my process. Do I need a little more or am I done? Um, and I... I'm not, I'm struggling here because I want the fall blessing to really stand out, but I also want to use a lot of these fun things that come in the, in the collection. So I end up deciding that I just want to leave it alone, but I do want to include some of these new cute clips and the acorn ones were perfect to add on the outside of that. And then I'm also going to add some little clouds in mostly because I want some extra color in there. A little bit of blue just adds a little bit of pop to it. Um, and those are tucked behind the trees as I put the whole thing together. The last part of the wreath that I want to show you how I constructed is the leaves. I used my Silhouette Cameo to cut these out and then I ended up deciding they were too flat to, they were just, they were lacking something. So I decided to go ahead and do some bending and folding and get out my brown ink. I inked up the edges of them, but I also, uh, folded where there might be veins on leaves and inked that up so that they just you can see the difference in the yellow one there and the orange one that it looks much more realistic uh, and less flat and blah if you will um I mean I, I can't even tell you how big of a difference at first was when I was looking at the wreath with them just flat I was like not quite and then when I folded it and inked them I was much happier with it so that's what I end up doing for all six of the leaves that I add above and below my banner. And then I just stuck those on with regular glue to make them hold. Thanks so much for joining me today.